Hey, what's up guys? I'm excited to unbox and review this Deco X4300 Pro. I will be doing speed tests, range tests, we'll go over the Deco app and a whole lot more, so stick around to the end to find out. And if you guys haven't already, take a quick second to smash that subscribe button, it's free to do. This thing has two special traits which are uncommon for dual band systems. Number one, it has an unusually high speed rating, AX4300. Number two, it has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which means it can support internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. Now, if you use a conjunction of all three, it can cover up to 7,000 square feet, but I will be doing range tests, so we'll go over all of that stuff shortly. Now, looking at the back, this is a good depiction of what a mesh Wi-Fi is. Essentially, it's designed to replace your existing router, and it this depiction right here, you see, it's really a Wi-Fi dead zone killer. That's really the best way of describing this thing, because you connect to one Wi-Fi name, one SSID, and when you're closer to this room, it connects you to this one. If you're closer to this one, it'll switch you here. And if you're closer to this one, it'll switch you here. And it does that automatically to ensure you have good Wi-Fi coverage. Now, TP-Link also offers Home Shield for free, which gives you some network protection, parental controls, quality of service, and some reports. So, unboxing this thing, we get three units. So, pulling one out, you get three Ethernet ports. Two are gigabit, one is 2.5 gigabits. Now, typically with TP-Link Deco devices, these are auto-sensing, so you can use any one of the three to connect to your modem and you should be good to go and other ones to connect to your switch or your other devices and this thing should automatically detect it. You also have your power and you have a factory reset right here. Now, I think these are all the same. Yeah, it looks like they're all routers. However, in the same network, only one of them would act as a router. They're pretty similar with other Deco products. It is 100 to 240 volts. If you guys are wondering, this is what it looks like. And you know you get two more of those, which, and you also get an Ethernet cable, which typically doesn't say if it's Cat5, e, Cat6, or Cat7, or any other category. Yeah, it doesn't say, but I'm assuming it supports at least gigabit speeds. That's my assumption. And you get a quick installation guide. It's been about a month since I've unboxed this thing using as my main mesh system, and so far so good. So super stable, no drops, super easy to set up using the Deck Lab. Now in that time, I had a chance to do all the speed test, range test, and for my testing devices, I used my Wi-Fi 6 device, which is my iPhone 14 Pro Max, and for my Wi-Fi 6E devices, I used a combination of my Pixel 6 Pro and Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now the numbers from these are pretty similar, so I just went with the Samsung numbers. Now, the other two Decos are actually still hooked up, and I wanna do a live speed test because something surprised me. I was honestly genuinely surprised. Even though it makes sense, it, it, it still caught me off guard. I was not expecting these speeds. So I'm going to use an open speed test server and I'm going to use my Samsung, which does support Wi-Fi 6E, even though again, it's hooked up to the uh, five gigahertz band and this is only Wi-Fi 6. The, this router does not support Wi-Fi 6E. So even though this uh, Samsung phone does support it, it's still communicating on Wi-Fi 6 on the five gigahertz band. Now, when I do a speed test, this is a local speed test. So my computer is acting as the speed test server and it's going from phone to router to computer, isolating the router, which gets the best possible speeds. Now you'll notice I'm getting really fast speeds and this is not even optimally placed. So if I optimally place this, it would get even faster, which is what I wrote down. But it's crazy how fast this is on the five gigahertz band. So it's just mind blowing. Now the reason for that is because this router supports a 2.5 gigabit port, so it supports a fast port. And because it's a dual band, it only has two bands, so a 2.4 and a five gigahertz but the five gigahertz actually supports speeds of up to 3,843 megabits. I mean, that's a th theoretical limit of its speed rating. So it makes sense. But then I was like, okay, well, let's try the same thing with the iPhone, which is just Wi-Fi 6, because I mean, I, I'm still uncapped to these, you know, crazy fast speeds, but the iPhone did not deliver. So if I do the same thing, even if I don't move the phone and place it here and all that other stuff and it gets better and faster speeds, it's not gonna get anywhere near the speeds that the 6E device got. 
Now that I have all three, let's continue with the internet speed test. So, no matter how fast your router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the router itself can even go that fast, which in my case, this can. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And looking at the speed test results, Wi-Fi 6 did normal and Wi-Fi 6C did better. Granted, you could see there's a huge drop in performance because now I'm actually relying on the public speed test server and it's going through my modem or my ONT in my case. Now to find their true performance, we go to the local speed test server, which I demoed. Essentially my computer is a server and I go from phone to router to computer. Looking at these speeds, they are a lot faster, both in Wi-Fi 6, especially in Wi-Fi 6C. Yeah, I was honestly, again, very surprised. Now jumping to wireless backhaul, this is when you have your main one hooked up to your modem or in my case for this test, the server, and this one is one or two rooms away, about 40 feet away in my case, and it's wirelessly talking to this one. Now when I do the speed test, I am actually doing it from the secondary one, which jumps to the primary one, which then goes to my computer as the server. Looking at the results, we could see that there is a reduction in speed. However, considering this is a dual band system where you don't have a dedicated band like you would get in a tri-band typically, or in the quad band, this actually did fairly well. Now jumping to wired backhaul, this is essentially the same as wireless backhaul, except there's an ethernet making its way from the secondary one to the primary one, and you can have a switch in between them if you want. We could see we got some really good speeds for Wi-Fi 6, basically the same, just about the same as the single router configuration. But for Wi-Fi 6C, even though it's really, really good speeds, it's not really the same as the single router configuration Wi-Fi 6C speeds. So why is that? Well, the reason is because you only have one fast 2.5 gigabit port. So if this guy's in use, even if you're going from the secondary 2.5, you only have to go in to the gigabit of this guy for this guy's 2.5 to go to the server. So really the 2.5 is connecting to the one gig and it's going to operate at the slower of the two speeds, which is why you're pretty much being capped to gigabit speeds. Range test. So range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of walls, a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers or wireless interference around, all of this stuff can negatively affect your range. So in my case, at 20 feet away, very good speeds. At 50 feet, I'm outside, still getting some pretty good speeds, even at 100 feet, which is across the street, still very good speeds, but it quickly slows down after that, and it goes all the way up to 300 feet, which is pretty good solid range. To set this thing up and configure it, use the Deco app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And it's one of my favorite apps because it's very simple, clean, and organized. So once it's set up and configured, it tells you all the devices that are connected to your home network. If you create a guest network, it'll tell you all the devices that are connected to your guest network. You can automate stuff, you can create shortcuts. If you have TP-Link smart home devices, you could do stuff like that. I don't use that, but you can. You get basic parental controls for free, uh, which are included in the price, I should say. And you get quality of service, you get some weekly reports. If you want more advanced parental controls, this is going to require a subscription, which does cost money. And then on the, really the fourth tab, which is the main tab, but the way I see it, you could set up your Wi-Fi name, you could set up your guest network, you could disable or enable the 2.4, the five gigahertz. I leave them both enabled for obvious reasons. And then there's this advanced section, set up port forwarding, you could set up your DHCP, you could you know, turn the LED on or off, you could set this up in access point mode or router mode and a whole bunch of other features. Now is it worth getting these, why or why not? Well, it honestly depends on your situation. I would say this is a very good system for anyone up to gigabit. You can even go faster than that because you know this does have the faster port. However, on your secondary nodes, it won't be as fast, even a, in a wired backhaul configuration, you will be limited to gigabit on the secondary stuff. Granted, for the price, you're getting quite a bit of performance, even though it is a dual band system, it performed very, very well. And the biggest surprise to me was how fast Wi-Fi 6C devices work, even on the five gigahertz band. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.